Welcome to the Path of a Swami podcast. My name is Swami Chidananda, and this is the second episode of 2024. Today, I wanted to speak about something my guru told me, and it's a sentence that I keep thinking about, and it was a sentence that God is crazy. And I, I reflect upon this, and I look at my own life, and I think, you know, if somebody, somebody were to tell me 12 years ago that you would be a monk traveling the world, speaking on spirituality, I would have told them that you're crazy. If you were to look at your own life, you know, if you're spiritually inclined, if you're just starting your spiritual journey, even if you came across this video randomly, just look at your life and the experiences that you've had. And sometimes it's hard not to look at it and say, wow, it's crazy how all of these things happen to me. So when we say this sentence, God is crazy, for me, this means it's amazing how God, the divine, plans everything in our life in such an intricate way, how every single experience is planned, not only for this life, but for many, many, many lives, right? To think about the the people that we meet, the books that we read, the videos that we watch, the situations that happen in our life. It's amazing how the divine has meticulously planned our life to the very breath that we take every second. And here we, we see this idea that, you know, God, the divine, it's so closely planning everything. Right? Because sometimes we think to ourselves, you know, we're alone, nobody is with us. We have to walk this path by ourselves. But in reality, it's not true. The divine has always been with you. We call him the Paramatma, that divinity that sits in our heart alongside our Atma, that goes with us life after life after life. And this divinity, this divine being, continuously plans every situation that we find ourselves in. And so when when my guru says God is crazy, he means it in the sense that it's amazing how everything is planned in such a way which is inconceivable to our mind, which is such a mystery to us, right? And, and we shouldn't lose this wonder because I think a lot of times in our life, we become like zombies, right? We just walk around, we wake up, we go to work, we go to sleep, and we don't look around and say, Look at all of the things that are happening around us. It can't be just coincidence. And when I look at my own life, even in the last few years, I find it amazing how the divine has planned so many interactions that I've had with people all around the world. I remember when I first came to, to New York City, um, I was looking for a place to stay and I couldn't really find anywhere. And of course, I didn't have any money. I was just getting a little bit of donations from people that I, had, I was teaching at the time. And uh, I came across this place randomly. It was like an Airbnb. And uh, there was a guy and he gave me a really, really good deal on a small room in this big house that, that he had. And I remember the first day that, that we met, he was traveling somewhere to Costa Rica or something like this. And, and that day he gave me the keys and you know, I, I walked in looking like this and he was asking me about um, my path and, and what I'm doing. And I told him I'm a Swami. And uh, actually at this time I was a Rishi. And I said, you know, if you want, I could teach you a mantra and you know, we could do a mantra together. And he was like, okay, let's do it. Because usually I, when I travel, I, I teach the mantra Om Namo Narayanaya. So we sat down together, we did the mantra, I gave him a mala, and then, you know, life carried on. So for about four years, I, I lost touch with him. I, I didn't really know what he was doing, where he was, and during this time, we also got the, the ashram in New York, in upstate New York, and, you know, life evolved. Life continuously changes. And just recently, I was in um, Topanga, California, and before that, I was actually in, in Miami at Art Week. And I met this, this person, his name is David. 
and we had a really good connection. And we met again in California, I'd given a talk there, and uh, I had told him that I was going to go to Envision, which is a festival happening in a few days, actually. And he said, oh, you know, I go to Envision all of the time. I have a lot of friends in Envision. I create a WhatsApp group and um, I add some people that maybe you can get in touch with. So he created this group and I was looking at the, the people in it. And one of the people were this guy that I had met four years ago, randomly, when I was looking for an Airbnb in New York. And so I was like, oh, this is interesting. And I wrote to David, I said, oh, David, do you know this person? And pretty much it turns out that this person is his brother. And so it just so happened that four years earlier, I had met his brother randomly in New York at an Airbnb, taught him the mantra. Four years later, I meet David. I, we hang out in, in LA, we connect from a spiritual standpoint. And then it turns out that that's his brother. And so when I think about these things, I can't help but think God is crazy, right? And this is the, the injustice that happens is that we start to, we stop to see the hand of the divine in our lives. We get so caught up in the ups and downs, the struggles, the um, anxieties, the things that we have to do that we don't take time to be grateful. We don't take time to, to look at everything that's happened to us, right? Because when we're not grateful, then, then we go into negativity. And it's really important to, to look and say, you know, look, God plans things in such a meticulous way, in such a way that everything in our life is guided, that we should also understand that the tough parts are also planned by Him. The struggles are also planned by Him. The moments where we have to go through some, some deep transformation is also planned by Him. Because sometimes it's said that there's only two ways to grow on the spiritual path, grace or suffering. And as humans, we don't always take advantage of grace. And so suffering is inevitable, not because the divine is, is uh, um, somebody that likes to see people suffer, a masochist. It's that sometimes that helps us to transform, that helps us to change. And so even the hard moments in our life has been planned perfectly so we can change. But when we go into our negativity, we don't see and take the time to be grateful for even the hard moments in our life. We don't take the time to see what can, how can we look at this so we can change? Because no matter how bad it might be, it could be much worse. There was once um, a guy and uh, he was at his guru's place and he was looking across the balcony and on the streets and he was seeing a man begging and he just had one leg. And he was begging and he was hopping on this one leg and his guru comes and he says, what are you doing? The man says, well, you know, I'm watching this homeless guy hopping on one leg. And I think to myself, you know, how cruel is God that he has to be born in this way? And the guru looks at him and he says, you know, if you only knew what he did in his past lives, you would be jumping down there to cut off his other leg. God is very merciful. So in that way, if we understand the law of karma, we must understand also that everything that we're experiencing is also a byproduct of our past actions. And no matter how bad or no matter what we did in the past, the divine is always merciful and gives us only what we can endure, it gives us only the amount that is needed so we can transform. And so if we always have this concept, this understanding, even in our struggles, it could be much worse. And that God has planned this meticulously for me so I can learn and transform this from this situation. Then our life takes on a whole different understanding and meaning. And so, you know, how can we, how can we understand this? How can we 
all the time practice gratitude in our life. And this can happen through prayer. Because a lot of people come to me and they, say, and they say, you know, I'm struggling, I'm not doing well. What can I do? So of course the spiritual path is not about making our lives easier, right? Because like I said, everything is planned how it needs to be. We don't need to make it easier. We have been given exactly what we need to change. The prayer is there to help us have the strength to go through what we need to and learn from the experiences that we've been given. Right? That's always the prayer. Let me have the strength to go through what I need to. Let me have the clarity to understand why the situation has come into my life and how I can use it to transform and be of service at the same time. So when we're praying, it's important that we understand who are we praying to? Right? Because who we're praying to will have an effect on the prayer. So if we are praying to have strength and courage and understanding to help us to see the divine in everything that is happening, then the prayer should be to the ultimate. Right? In the Vedic tradition, we call that divine being Narayana. But in the West, we call it God. But God is such a limited term. Better way to explain God is generator, operator, destroyer. So it's that divine, that divine being that has generated all of this, is operating it, ultimately destroying it, and a new field coming out once again. Because a lot of people will say, you know, I'm going to pray to the universe. But what is the universe going to do? The universe is only going to give you that which is material. So if you want a new car, if you want to manifest something, okay, pray to the universe. Use manifestation mantras for things of the universe and you'll get it. But what you are looking for is love. What you are looking for is eternal. So praying to the universe isn't going to do that. You need to pray to that which has created the universe. That's why I, I laugh when people say, I pray to the universe. That's great. Now, if you want material things, manifest, connect to the universe. But the universe will not give you that which it, it does not have. And that is eternal love. For that, you have to pray to that which has created the universe. And that we can call God or divine or Narayana. So the first thing important, pray to that which you think can give you understanding and eternal love. Right? That's the first thing. The second thing is, how do we pray? Right? How can we pray? Of course, if we have a sincere heart, then we don't need to go to a temple. We don't need to go to a, a cave. We don't need to go to a church. In my home, sitting on my knees, I can pray to that divine being and say, please help me. But because our minds are so focused on the outside world, because our ego is so strong, it's hard to make that sincere prayer, that sincere connection. And so that is why how we pray is also important. So I always encourage people, before prayer, come into a state where you feel connected to the divine. So one of the greatest ways, easiest ways to do that is through mantra chanting. By chanting a specific mantra with a specific vibration, we start to drop from the mind to the heart. And when we get to that heart space, then we can sincerely pray, okay? So that's really important. That's why a guru is so important in our life. Because being around the presence of a guru, learning from a guru, we come to that state of purification where our prayers were really connected to God. You think just because a priest or a, a swami is in a temple praying that he's actually connecting to God. No, God's not going to listen. He's not going to, the divine's not going to listen to that. You know, you can memorize the entire Gita. You can look great. You can know everything. But if you don't have a sincere heart, the prayers are not going to reach the divine. So it's important how you pray. Prepare yourself through the practices and then sincerely pray to, to the divine, something beyond the universe. 
to give you the strength to go through what you need to. And lastly, it's what do you pray for? So as we spoke about in, in the last few minutes, it's important that what we pray for matters. Right? If we pray for something material, we don't need to pray to God. We can just go to a, a retreat, learn some manifestation mantras, connect to the universe in some way, and whatever you want of this world you can have. But this world is limited. Even if you have a billion dollars, you're still gonna suffer. Death is still gonna come. A billion dollars is not gonna make your wife or your children or your husband love you, right? So pray for something greater. Pray to experience that love, that divine love. Pray to experience that love because when you experience it, then you understand that God is crazy. Everything is planned how it needs to. So it's really important that when you sit in prayer, pray to the ultimate, properly learn how to pray, and then pray for the right things. If you do those things, then you will see that your whole life will change. You'll find so much more clarity in your duty. You'll be so much more connected to the divine will. So, just wanted to share that, some insights about prayer and about how we can view the divine. So I wanna say thank you to all of you that have listened so far. Uh, it's lovely to connect with all of you also when I'm traveling and, and to hear that uh, the podcast has somehow provided some insights for you. Uh, if you've listened this far, write in the comment section uh, what, you, what was a takeaway for you from this particular episode. So I look forward to seeing you again soon and um, we'll be doing some pilgrimages in the coming year, be traveling to India. So if you want, you can go on the website and register so you can stay updated about new things that are happening. So much love, take care.